Laurie, uh, exciting times. So how's everyone feeling ahead of this Vitality Blast home quarterfinal against Kent? Yeah, it's obviously a great um, thing that we've managed to qualify and get a home quarterfinal. A great thing for the club and you know the players are obviously really excited and, and proud of their efforts through the group stages. Um, so yeah, everyone's raring to go. What's the secret behind a, a seven-match winning streak in this competition then? I don't, I don't know, to be honest. I just think people finding form um, finding roles and you know you just build that confidence you get on a bit of bit of a momentum streak and yeah seven wins is pretty extraordinary actually and yourself I mean you've been finding form admittedly a little bit of a lean start in this competition Laurie and then I mean that 88 not out at, at Chelmsford in that what was a, a pivotal game wasn't it yeah um, you know winning on winning on the, the final ball and then 268 runs in the last four innings is there anything particularly you put that down to um, I just think the change of county certainly took me a while to settle in and um, you know you always want to impress your new teammates and you know a new club so um, I would I'd be lying if I said I felt really comfortable when I first arrived you know and it took me a bit of time to settle in and and then obviously at, at Essex I don't know something just felt I just felt really calm that day and you know we were chasing a big total so yeah. it's pretty self-explanatory how you know we needed to go about it so you know fortunately it went our way and and then yeah I've just sort of carried on sort of what I've been doing and over the last couple of years I guess. Is there a, a great deal of confidence in the batting as a whole because you know you've battled with Gus Atkinson there in that game you've, you've battled with Jason Roy in the, in the last game I mean up and down the order it feels that Surrey bat deep and now batting well. Yeah I, I think you know, obviously, in the years past when I've played Surrey, they've always had amazing players coming in and out of the side all the time. So, I think for the first time we've had a settled lineup. Um, you know, with some with some quality right through. You know, that like you said, down to Gus. Um, you know, Jamie since he's arrived has been outstanding. Um, so yeah, it's just some some really sort of exciting talent that are actually now you know producing the goods. And you've got a mixture of you know, the, the top level in international talent, you've got the, the T20 specialists, people like yourself who've played yeah. all, all over the world. And then you've got the, the young talents as well. I just I, I wonder, especially in terms of batsmen, a, a word on, on Will Jacks, who's the second highest run scorer behind you in this competition, and indeed Jamie Smith, who's had some important runs in the T20. Yeah, class. I mean, those two are certainly standout young players for me, not in just the way you know that they play, but like them as characters, they're very level-headed, very driven um, you know nice young men and they want to they want to do well and that's that's important you know in, when you're at a club like this you know it's important that you you realize where you are and and put in the hard work and then hopefully you see it out on the field so it's sort of my job to come in and you know hopefully um, guide the, the team um, in a way that I have done um, like you say around the world and and just try and allow them to then go and express themselves like Jack C's done it so well at the top of the order and I'm just there to sort of um, f you know be a foil to that if I can be. Yeah it feels like there's a real natural balance there you've got the likes of Hashim Amla with with all of his attributes both with the bat and also mentoring I guess and then you've got Jamie who's only 20 you know almost yeah. half his age and then you're you're I guess halfway in between Do, does that yeah. does that pervade through the dressing room as well that there's a real natural balance and fluidity? Yeah there's a definite um, balancing the squad of older, middle, younger. So it's, it's, a, it's a great squad to be a part of and join. Um, and hopefully, you know, I obviously just want to add to that and, and help, you know, someone like Jamie, you know, progress over the next five years, whatever it is. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully he can become, you know, Hashim when Hashim decides that he's had enough. Um, I don't know when that'll be because he's still so good. Um, but yeah, I, someone like Jamie, you know, over the next five years will want to push up the order and, and start contributing like Jaxie has this year. And, and also looking at that top middle order, just a little bit more specifically in terms of batting styles, you've got the likes of yourself, Jason Roy, Will Jax, who, who can be explosive when needed, but then also you've got Ben Folks, Hashim Amla, Rory Burns, people who, who can pace innings. Again, how important is that when you get to the business end of the competition? Because you've then got options in terms of whether you put someone up the order, wh yeah. whatever's needed for that particular scenario. I, I think, guess. you know, T20, um, especially in big games and knockouts, is all about handling pressure and and that's my job. Um, you know, I see 
myself as obviously a senior player in the, in the side and it's, it's, it's my job along with a few others to, to get us to you know winning score and, and in, in big games that's not necessarily you know um, you know 200 210 so you know it's, it's about assessing the wicket um, and you know just making calm you know smart decisions under pressure. What about the idea of playing with, with no crowds? I guess you've got used to it now, but you know, you've played T20 franchise cricket all over the world, Laurie, and, and you've played in front of massive crowds and, and incredible atmospheres. Yeah. What have you done to cope with that? And how do you find your own, I guess, fire and focus when you don't have the crowd to feed off? Um, yeah, it's been difficult. I think it's more of a challenge in the field, like when you're fielding, because there isn't that sort of, like you say, that buzz off the crowd to, you know, to you know take us amazing catch obviously you always want to take an amazing catch but when the crowd's there it just gives you that little lift when you you know to go and do something amazing um so yeah it, it is a challenge and i think i think all cricketers england cricketers who have played you know in front of no crowds county cricketers th there's definitely been an element that it has um affected you know uh, the way that the games are being played um but you know, when you're even in, even if you're in front of fifty thousand people or, or none, like when you're out in the middle batting, you don't necessarily notice that much. I mean, obviously, there's no buzz off the crowd if you if you hit a couple of boundaries, you know, and you start feeling the crowd, you know, lift, and obviously that puts the bowler under pressure and stuff like that. So there isn't that. Um, but you know, we're still just playing the game of cricket, and um, you know, we 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 seem to hopefully know how to do that. Yeah, you find you find your own methods, I <laughs> yeah. guess, and you know, we're used to this place being absolutely jam-packed on a Thursday, yeah. Friday night. Yeah. And you know, as I mentioned before, in other venues you, you've played, finals day without crowds is, is going to be surreal, I guess, because yeah, yeah. we, we used to it being an all-day occasion. Um, but what about the idea of not just reaching finals day, but, but maybe even going all the way? It's been yeah. 17 years since Surrey yeah, yeah. lasted that. But is there this real kind of confidence and momentum given the, the, the run of form that you're on? Yeah, I, I mean... Obviously, I've just arrived, and obviously, I do know that obviously the last time they won this competition was a long time ago. Um, I've been fortunate enough to to, to win it um, and be at finals there a couple of years ago, and it is an amazing day. Um, it's the best day of the year if you're a county cricketer um, who hasn't played international cricket. It certainly is the best day of the year. Um, and yeah, I know there's no reason why this team can't go all the way. We've played some great cricket, um, but you know seven games counts for nothing now you know if if we don't turn up on thursday um you know then you know we'll be over and be into lockdown and quarantine over the winter like everyone else so there's sometimes some pressure on you know when you've won all those games and we've certainly seen that you know last year with sussex we won 10 games um and then lost in the quarter final and we're done and dusted so it's it's about putting what's gone to bed and and just turning up on thursday and just doing a job and, and as you say, I mean, focusing on the task in hand, right, and that this is home quarter final, is the fact that you're playing the same opposition much of a factor, you know, either psychologically or just knowing how they operate? I mean, obviously their top order is, is still stacked. You're still yeah, going to have yeah. to make inroads there. Yeah, I, they're a great side, Ken, you know, um, and their batting is probably their strength. Um, it'll probably, it'll feel a bit odd playing the same team, you know, having played them a couple of weeks ago. I think we'll probably play on a similar wicket. I can understand why Sky didn't want to televise it. It could probably <laughs> be a bit... Groundhog you know, day, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but, look, it's, I think it will work both ways. I mean, they'll know what we're going to bring. We'll know what they're going to bring. Um, and like I say, at the end of the day, it's down to who comes out and performs the best. You know, quarterfinals can produce some funny things in, in under pressure. So um, we just got to make sure we go out and do our jobs like we have been doing and take the confidence that we've that we created, but also you know, realise that, you know, there is a bit of extra pre pressure on us, you know, to perform after all those wins. So, you know, just try and approach it like another game. Great speaking to you, Laurie. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, thanks.